Before I get into how to create and use groups, what exactly is a group, and how are groups different from blocks? Both groups and blocks are collections of objects that can be manipulated as a unit, but differences in the way they are created, stored, and used make different situations appropriate for each. Here are some scenarios, along with which object type makes the most sense for each one. If you need it only temporarily, or only in one drawing, you'll probably want to use a group. If you need to share it with multiple drawings or projects, choose a block. If you often need to edit individual components, use a group. If you don't need to edit individual components, choose a block. You'll also want a block if you need to store information and attributes, if you want to put it on a tool palette, menu, toolbar, or ribbon icon, and if you want to be able to search for it with Design Center or Content Explorer. Now, more than one of these criteria might apply to your situation. In that case, you'll have to evaluate it for yourself. I can't cover everything here. In AutoCAD LT 2012, the functions associated with the group command haven't really changed, but they've gotten a facelift, starting with their new panel on the Home tab of the ribbon. The large group icon puts you right into Select Objects mode. I'll select the items I want to add to my group and press Enter. That's it, I've created a group. When I click on any one of the objects in the group, the entire group is highlighted with a single grip at the center and a bounding box around the outside. I can use the grip to move, rotate, scale, or mirror the entire group. I can also copy the group, easily duplicating the entire set of objects. Back on the ribbon, I could use this button to ungroup the objects if I was finished working with them, but for now I'll leave the group intact. The next button enables me to add or remove objects from my group. First, I'll add some objects, then go back and remove some others. There's also a rename option here. You can give names to your groups, but you don't have to. If you do, remember that each group name must be unique. So if you name a group and then copy it, the copy won't have the same name. The last icon on the main portion of the panel turns a group selection on and off. When I turn it off, it's as if groups don't exist. I can select individual objects and grip edit them, or use other commands like move and rotate. When I turn group selection back on, the objects are back in their original groups. There are two more functions on the expanded portion of the panel. The first is the group manager. I'm not going to say anything more about it here though, because all its functions are more easily accessible from the rest of the groups panel. The second button controls the display of the bounding box. When it's on, as it is by default, a selected group displays a center grip and outer rectangle. When I turn the bounding box off, I see all the grips for all the individual objects in the group. I can use those grips to edit the objects, but commands like move and rotate still act on the group as a whole. Toggling the bounding box is a good way to edit individual objects without turning off group selection entirely.